Hi YouTube, this is Felicia with Bible Scraps and welcome to a new mini-series called The 12 Days of Christ Must, which is a mini-series where I will bring a video for the next 11 days celebrating the real reason for the season and that reason is Christ Jesus himself. And I will be creating in every video something that I called a rubber stamp snippet roll fold, something like that. It's a new concept that I developed recently. And basically I'm using receipt paper. You can use actual receipts, but I have a lot of receipt rolls that I got from a thrift store and I will be creating a rubber stamp collage. Now this creation, it's perfect for you junk journalers. And if you are like so many crafters right now who are into the vintage red rubber stamp, well, it's a, it's a good way to play with your stamps, test them out. But at the same time, you can create this beautiful custom work of art and send it in happy mail and once again it can be used as or used in your junk journaling all right i got a question for you all do you christmas carol have you ever been christmas caroled to have you ever seen anybody christmas carol is it even a thing today to christmas carol now, right before I filmed this video, I remembered the first time, or it's my earliest recollection of Christmas caroling. <laughs> I remember thinking, Christmas caroling is so white because black people do not Christmas carol. <laughs> you see, what had happened was I... I was about 17 or 18 years old and I was with my brother at his surrogate family's home and they all decided to Christmas carol. So I went with them. But you know what? I remember it was so fun. It was really cold that night. And thank you, Lord. I'm kind of having flashbacks. You guys know I don't remember much. But anyway, it was cold that night, but I remember how festive it was. I remember how unique it was. We were the only ones out there Christmas caroling. But you know what? All the recipients were receptive. They were overjoyed. I believe that Christmas caroling, it's a lost art today. It's a lost experience. But I tell you, if you have yet to Christmas carol, Put that on your Christmas bucket list. The experience is so enriching. Okay, so since then, because that was a long, long time ago, since then, I have Christmas caroled even more. I used to have a children's ministry at church, and part of our ministry was to make handmade cards and deliver those cards to um, patients at the local children's hospital and to, to those at the convalescent or rest homes. And I recall in particular, maybe about 15 years ago, actually the ministry was birthed in my home before I took it to the church. So, um, I had different kids come to my home and they were a part of this ministry, but nonetheless, we all Christmas caroled at a local convalescent hospital. And people, let me tell you, we did the whole hospital. We did not leave one room, one patient. We did everyone. But I remember it was this one particular gentleman and the nurse warned us that he was mean. He was antisocial and mean, but I wasn't gonna leave that man out. So me and the kids, and I had a my good friend with me who helped me with this ministry, we all walked in to this, this man's room. And yes, he looked mean. He looked like he did not want to be bothered. And I don't know what he was mumbling and grumbling. But people, we sang to him. I don't know what songs we sang. It was probably We Wish You a Merry Christmas and Silent Night. 
because I really didn't know a lot of songs at the time. <laughs> and we just kept re-singing the same ones over and over and over again. But something amazing and transforming took place. This man who was angry, I don't know if he was bitter, but he broke down. He broke down and caused the staff to also cry. And I remember one of the staff members walked up to me. She thanked me. She thanked us. And she told me she had never seen this man show such raw emotion. He was moved. Whatever that burden was, whatever had him chained, made him angry, it fell off him that day because we sang. We sang to him. And I hope to never forget that experience. Um, maybe about 10 years ago, my family, we went Christmas caroling. This was at our last home and it was a nice size crowd <laughs> we had with us, maybe about eight people. And I remember something happened at the first house we went to. Um, I thought the lady, well, she opened the door and then she shut it real fast. And I was like, uh-oh, we just got the door slammed on us. <laughs> But she didn't slam the door. She went and got money and tried to give us money. And I thought, no, we're not here. We're not solicitors. <laughs> so I don't know. I think someone in our group, perhaps my mother-in-law stated back in the year, that's what they did. They would tip or give a little bit of something, something to um, the people who are Christmas caroling. But we told her we're not here, you know, to collect any money. We're just here to deliver the good news via song. <laughs> and she was so overjoyed. As a matter of fact, every house we went to that night, I, I want to say one person probably cried. Just by us showing up to administer a little bit of holiday cheer brought someone to tears. Everybody we visited were pleased with us and my family um, Christmas caroling that night. As a matter of fact, about three years ago in our current neighborhood, we also Christmas caroled. And I remember my direct neighbor's response. Actually, he said, I think he said he had never been Christmas Carol too. And someone else had stated it had been so long since they saw or heard anyone Christmas caroling. And if you Christmas Carol, what songs do you carol? What are some of your favorite Christmas songs? I think some of the most beautiful songs ever are Christmas songs. Silent Night. Joy to the world, O come all ye faithful, O holy night. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. They really capture the essence of what Christmas is about. And once again, it's about his birth. It's about Jesus. If you don't know, the Bible does talk about a lot about singing. Oh my goodness. You guys can do a study on singing in the Bible, it is a part of praise and worship to God. Um, and if you don't know, Mary, the mother of Jesus, she broke out in song after the angel delivered the news that she would give birth to the son of God. And you can read about that in chapter in Luke chapter 1, 46 through 55. Zechariah also broke out in a praise type song. And you could read about that. Look on the screen for that chapter and verse information. But the angels, the angels who delivered the news to the shepherds, they broke out in like a poem type song type. What else can it be called? They, they had words of praise, glory to the highest, peace and goodwill. All those are like in the category of the song, the music, the melody we ought to make to the Lord because scripture tells us to. 
Ephesians 5 and 19 states, and this is beautiful. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Sing and make music from your heart. You don't even need an instrument. The only instruments you need is a heartbeat and breath. And you can make music to the Lord. It don't matter how you sound. And Colossians 3 and 16 states, Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. And as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your heart to God. You see, God wants us to sing to him. God wants to hear the melody of our spirit because God knows there's something transforming about singing. And when you sing unto him, you don't believe me? Check out Acts chapter 16. The Bible states that Paul and Silas, they were in prison. They were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners heard. You see, when you sing, people, don't be afraid to let others hear your melody to the Lord. For the Lord might be using you to set someone free, just like he used Paul and Silas here in the text of this story. As they were singing to the Lord, suddenly there was an earthquake and the foundations of the prison shook. And guess what happened? All the prisoners, their chains were loosened. They fell to the ground. They were set free because Paul and Silas, they were singing to God. If you want to be set free, sometimes the prescription that you need is a melody in your heart and that to God. If you don't feel good, if you need a mental and emotional tune-up, Open up your mouth and start singing to the and Lord. Sometimes I'll just break out with a hum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. point is, there's a melody. There's a song to be sang to the Lord that only you can sing. And God is waiting for that melody. So whether or not we Christmas carol this season, whether or not we sing at all, whether or not you think you can sing, just know there's a carol in your spirit that only you can sing to God. So open up your mouth and him, hum, ooh, ah, praise, shout, but offer that song to the Lord. If you like this video, why not like it? Give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that bell for notifications if you are interested in my future uploads in this series. Also, share your Christmas caroling experiences below. All right, you all, I want to thank you all for watching. As always, blessings. I wish you a Merry Christmas. I wish you a